Okay. Uh, I'm going to. All right. So we're going to go to Matthew 28. I'm going to read verse 16 through 20. And then when y'all ready, we're going to do our confession. <laughs> All right. Ready? All right. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer and not just a hearer. I'm about to receive the incorruptible indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God and I will never be the same never be the same in Jesus name Amen okay so Matthew 16 no Matthew 28 verse 16 we're going to start there and go to 20 it says then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. So, my lesson is called The Big Picture, and that's what it's about. Uh, it also says in this, The Great Commission, but the title is The Big Picture. Um, and it's about us serving, worshiping, surrendering, and sacrificing, knowing that the king is with us. Like he said, I'm with you. I'm always with you. I've never forsaken you. You know, I got the king with me. There's a certain confidence you have when you know he's with you. He's not going anywhere. So it made me think of uh, coming to America. Y'all know, like, the people around him, when they were with him, it, it was a certain attitude and demeanor they had because... They're royalty, you know. There's no denying your royalty. So that's the, the big picture. We have to serve God with that in mind, that he, he didn't go anywhere. Serve him with a pure heart, uh, an attitude of worship, to just just go full-fledged. Don't hold back in our, uh, in our service to God, okay? So worship, we know, is adoration, true reverence, and uh, one definition, to honor with extravagant love and extreme submission. So in order to be a servant of God, it's, it takes submission automatically. So we have to be submitted to him first and foremost. Um, and then it says, like, commit all your ways to the Lord. I want to go to Romans 12 and verse 1. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then another translation, it says, which is your true and proper worship. Okay. So beyond, you know, your bodies presented as a living sacrifice in worship, we stand and we raise our hands and we cry out to God or we tell him, hey, God, I love you. I'm acknowledging who you are. And it's beyond our posture. Your surrender is beyond your posture. It's beyond you raising your hands. It's beyond you bowing down. It's in your service, how you choose to live your life every day. So we have to worship him in our lifestyle. Okay, and then we want to be able to hear that, well done, my good and faithful servant. So what does it take for us to be a faithful servant? You know, and we hear like uh, we can't. I'm gonna go over the things we we reason some people choose not to serve or people are afraid to serve. 
uh, and we it's oftentimes like um, it's a, a fear of the unknown. People feel like, oh, how am I gonna go out and minister this word to this person? How am I gonna go and uh, just kind of walk up to somebody I don't know? Go out on the street and minister? Because he's, I mean, he's calling us out of the four walls, y'all, especially with, you know, everything we're seeing going on right now. But somebody might be afraid. Don't fear. The king is with you when you serve. Don't forget your royalty. Don't forget the big picture. It's beyond you, all right? Um, and then some people, it could be just lazy. You, you don't want to, or you have a selfish motive where you're like, hey, that's, that's fine, somebody on the street. That's cool. I mean, that doesn't have nothing to do with me. Thank you, Lord, for my house. But still, that's kind of, that don't go together, you know? <laughs> so we have to make sure in all that we do, we're looking to please God in our, in our everyday walk. So, and then some people may feel like you don't serve because you don't feel worthy enough to serve. What can I give to somebody else? You might say, oh, my own sin. I don't, you know, I don't know if I can do all that, you know. But God is calling us higher. He wants us to do it. And if you feel that that's you, allow him to cleanse you. He's going to do it once you take that step and say, God, you know what? I want to serve. When you started here in church and rose, rose your hands, keep going with it. Let him cleanse you. Day by day, he's going to work it out on the inside of you. Um, so I want to read to you Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to read verse 14 through 17. Well, I'm going to read it out of the Message Bible. I, I was feeling that translation, you know. <laughs> it says, work at getting along with each other and with God. Otherwise, you'll never get so much as a glimpse of God. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for weeds of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Watch out for the Esau syndrome, trading away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short-term appetite. You well know how Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing, but by then it was too late. Tears or no tears. So that's in... In the end, after you've made your decision, at the end of the day, you, once you didn't stray and did what you did, say, like, God, I don't need to serve, but you decide you're back, it's like, well, what does that mean? You've, you've been here before, you know? So let's make sure we are serving with a true heart in the very beginning, you know? And with the Esau syndrome, I thought about, um, you know, the lesson's called The Big Picture. It made me think about what type of self-portraits are we painting that we think we have our life looking good on the outside, and, and, and we, we sh we've shown it off, and, and it is looking good, so say, on the outside. But what is your innards, you know? <laughs> are, we, are we, the stuff people don't see on the stage, are we serving? Are we witnessing? Are we saving souls for Christ? You know, stuff like that. So, and then I want to scroll down on Hebrews uh, 12 and go to verse 28 and 29. And I'm going to read that out of the Message Bible, too. A little before that, it was talking about God shaking things up and cleaning things out. But uh, here it says, Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship. Deeply reverent, reverent before God. For God is not an indifferent bystander. He's actively cleaning house torching all that needs to burn, and he won't quit until it's all cleansed. God himself is fire. So when we, once again, the worship, we say, holy fire, burn away. My desire uh, is for anything, not like you, more like, you know, I want to be more like you, you know. We, we stand and we, we speak in worship. It's meant for our everyday lives beyond that moment. We have to find the Holy Spirit in each moment after we walk out of these doors in the worship service. Yes, it is a service in that time, but we continue in that. It does not have to stop. We can flow in the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. All right? And then 
so from there, um, I, I thought about another song lyric. It says, fill us up and send us out. I want to live a life poured out. So with that being said, how is that possible? So now we get to the reasons to serve. You live a life poured out because of this, right? Uh, God is amazing. <laughs> it's just that simple. Like, I mean... We offer a sacrifice of praise. We call it a sacrifice of praise, but think about this. Think about you raising your hands to praise God, and think about Jesus on the cross with his hands out with nails, nailing your sins, taking your sins away. Uh, I mean, we call sacrifice missing a TV show to come to church. I mean, that's not... <laughs> That's not nothing compared to what God did for us, y'all. So I just want to remind us of that tonight, that, that don't get too complacent. Let's, let's go out and let's serve God and as best we can. And it's more than me saying actually maybe like a street ministry, a park ministry. You can do it on your jobs. You can do it in your church ministry, serve to the best of your abilities, with your families, all of the above. So serve them, I mean, in the grocery store, how do you treat the cashier? I mean, you serve God. You are a testament uh, of what he's done for you when they, when they hear you speak, when they see your frown or smile or attitude, face, or, you know, all kinds of stuff. All right. So reasons to serve, um, we have to want it. I want to go to Leviticus 22 and verse 29. All right. Y'all there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it says, and when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it of your own free will. You have a choice every day to serve him when you wake up in the morning. And you have a choice to say, God, I, I, I died to flesh. I choose to live according to your will. I won't hesitate to serve. I won't hesitate to sacrifice, you know. So that was the first. We, we serve him just because of who he is. Next, we should want to serve in our daily walk just out of love for others. You know, once we have established who God is, it, it, it makes us have a clear picture of love. So next, we should be able to have compassion for our brothers and sisters. We should be able to look in their eyes and allow God to tell us their needs. Allow God to say, is this something I should do? Should I be... Uh, sowing a seed to them, God, is it just prayer that you're asking me for? Is it just this? God is going to give that to you. And then next, so once we know that, we, want, we ought to want it for ourselves. So, I mean, it comes full circle with the free will. With us serving God in that manner, we begin to prosper. So let's go to John 12. And then verse 26. And this one says, If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. So you're talking about a great honor. If, if, you, if you're a servant of the king in, in all his majesty, imagine the honor that he, you know, he's saying he can honor you. Like, what, you know? <laughs> so, um, and I also, I know I'm going, you know, going through scriptures right now, and I want to go to 2 Chronicles 31 and verse 21. 2 Chronicles 31 and verse 21. And this is Hezekiah, and, and it says, And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law, in the commandment, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart, so he prospered. So that's that true and proper worship, y'all. That's that 
uh, reasonable service that they're talking about. We prosper because of that, you know. And then God had me to just have a declaration for you today. It says, where he sins, I go. Where I go, I serve. So, in other words, we, as, as he sends us out, just do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> oh, say, where he sends, I go. Where I go, I serve. Yeah. Because where, where Jesus went, he served, y'all. Think about Jesus. He was, I mean, Jesus is a carpenter. Can you imagine, like, the type of five skills he had, carpentry, like, he served, he did what he was supposed to do on his job, not to mention saving our souls. So, I, I mean, that was a simple one I thought of. So, on your jobs, are we serving him? Are we doing our best? When our coworkers aren't practicing integrity, what are you doing? You know? Because uh, just like our sin holds no weight against the big picture, which is salvation, your neighbors doesn't either. Don't, don't worry about it. I mean, God will forgive them. Don't allow that to hinder you from serving, okay? And then, so, aside from God, we talked about compassion for others, self. And then this is also others, but it's a broader perspective because it's about the next generation, um, so I want to go to Second Chronicles 34. And I'm going to read 31 through 33. And this one is, Then the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. And he made all who were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin take a stand. So the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Thus Josiah removed all the abominations from all the country that belonged to the children of Israel and made all who were present in Israel diligently serve the Lord their God. All his days they did not depart from following the Lord God of their fathers. So that's a question for y'all today. Um, are we raising up servants of the king? You know, if your children have to look back at the way you served and say, I'm serving the God of my mother. I'm serving the God of my father. And they're doing it based on what they've seen from you. Where would their life be? That's a question for y'all tonight. We got to make sure we're on our post because of the next generation. You know, we keep seeing more and more about the news. We were having a conversation about that now. Like, uh, what kind of world is my niece growing up in? Or what kind of world are the new children coming into, you know? And it's something to think about that if, if we thought it was harder, or if we're, I'm growing up seeing 9-11 and we're still seeing attacks and this, that, and the other now, what do you have to give your children? What do you have to tell them to continue to serve? How can they help? How can they uh, be prayer warriors for someone else. How can they, you know, just help y'all. I'm just saying. All right? <laughs> and the God of their fathers. So, yeah. And then I'm just saying look for opportunities to serve. Be true and conscious God worshipers on a daily basis. And then um, let me read to you Hebrews 12. And now we're going to read verse 12 and 13. That chapter was like so cool. I hadn't read the whole thing like that. The, it, it's titled The Discipline of God in some section, sections. Or in, uh, this one says discipline in a long distance race. Is because we were created to serve. That's not a, I'm going to stop, you know. 
I'm tired right now. So, no, God is calling us to do that constantly. Okay, so Hebrews 12 and verse 12 and 13. I'm going to read that out of the Message Bible as well. It says, so don't sit around on your hands. No more dragging your feet. Clear the path for long-distance runners so no one will trip and fall. So no one will step in a hole and sprain an ankle. Help each other out and run for it. So that means we got assignments. We don't need to sit on it. Let's go ahead and be about it, you know? <laughs> so he's requiring this. Like Jesus sacrificed for us. That was the, the, the big picture is salvation. He was willing and he was able to do so. Are we willing? Are we able? He's equipped us as well. He said greater works we should be doing. What are we doing? <laughs> so we got to do something, you know? And then uh, my final scripture is Ephesians 2, verse 10. I think I started with 9. Let's see. No, I started with 8. So Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So that's way back when he, we were created to serve, created to work on behalf of the kingdom. So in your royal state, we should constantly be focusing on the big picture. <laughs> All right? Remember that and allow the Holy Spirit to flow in our everyday lives. Don't hesitate to seek him. Don't be afraid of him calling you forward and be confident in knowing that him pushing you forward. Is, it's not a bad thing. He's allowing us to, to see greater works. All right. We got to want it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't lose sight of the big picture. Amen.